Welcome back to Crux Stationalis. Before we head to the Roman Station Church for the fourth Sunday in Advent, I want to take you to the three Roman Station Churches for the Ember Days of Advent. The Ember Days of Advent are the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday of the third week of Advent. The stations of the Ember Days are the same in all four seasons of the year, being held on Wednesday at St. Mary Major, Friday at the Church of the Twelve Apostles, and on Saturday at St. Peter's. The Mass of Ember Wednesday at St. Mary Major commemorates the Incarnation in preparation for the Lord's Nativity, joining to the Gospel of the Annunciation the famous prophecy of Isaiah, that a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. The station is therefore most appropriately held at St. Mary Major. The Roman Station Church of Ember Friday is at the Church of the Twelve Apostles, where we find the tomb of the Apostle Saints Philip and James. The Church of Santi Apostoli has no obvious connection to any part of the day's liturgy. A 12th century liturgical commentator notes, however, that the reason behind the choice of station is quite obscure. He finds reference to it in the communion of the Mass. Behold, the Lord will come, and all his saints with him, and there will be on that day a great light. This commentator states that this clearly refers to the glorification of these same apostles, who will come with him in the second coming unto judgment. And on Ember Saturday, the local church at Rome goes to St. Peter's yet again. The Ember Tides were originally the privileged season for ordinations, and those of Advent being the oldest, were once the only season in which holy orders were conferred. On Ember Wednesday, a procession of all the clergy and people was held, similar to those which took place every day of Lent. And on Ember Wednesday, the church would process from St. Peter's in chains to St. Mary Major, where the formal announcement was made of those who would be ordained to the priesthood. On Ember Saturdays, five prophecies are read before the Epistle and the Gospel, a total of seven readings. Tonsure was conferred after the Kyrie, and minor orders each after one of the first four readings. First, porters, then lectors, then exorcists, and then acolytes. Subdeacons were ordained after the fifth reading, which is the same on each of the four Ember Saturdays throughout the liturgical year, and deacons after the epistle. Priestly ordination was then given after the next-to-last verse of the tract, so that nothing, not even the solemn rites of holy orders, may detract from the singing of the gospel as the culmination of the Mass of the Catechumens. In this case, then, it is not the text of the Mass or office that determines the station, nor the station that determines the text. The station for the Ember Saturday is held at the tomb of the Apostle Peter to express the union of every member of the Roman clergy, from the lowliest porter to the archpriest of the Basilica, with Peter's successor, the Pope. Before we head to the Roman Station Church for the fourth Sunday in Advent, I want to thank you for watching our Roman Station Church series at Crux Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. We are slowly growing here at Crux Stationalis. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications. Every little bit you do helps the channel grow and allows more people to come with me to the Roman Station Churches. Now, let's go to Santi Apostoli. Still by the 12th century, no station church had been assigned to the fourth Sunday of Advent, a fact which is explained by understanding that the mystery of the Incarnation, with which this Sunday is principally occupied, is too great to be entrusted to any one of Christ's saints. The later addition of a station at the Church of the Twelve Apostles, where one had just been held two days before on Ember Friday, seems also to be connected to the previous day's ordinations at the Basilica of St. Peter's. In this church of Santi Apostoli, Peter is also honored, but as one of the company of Christ's closest disciples, their head to be sure, but as Pope St. Leo the Great writes, the power of the keys passed also to the other apostles and to all the princes of the church. As the apostles and those ordained by them all collaborated in the same mission under the leadership of St. Peter, so do the clergy of Rome, ordained by the Pope, 
all collaborate with him as their head. Hence, also the epistle of this Sunday begins, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and the dispensers of the mysteries of God. And so we come here to the tomb of two apostles, St. Philip and St. James. For these ministers and dispensers of the mysteries of God, whom St. Paul speaks of in today's epistle, are the apostles and their successors in the clergy. Once upon a time, these words were the very first sentence of the sacred scriptures to be read at every priest's first Sunday Mass, at least according to the liturgical use of Rome. This reading is the beginning of the fourth chapter of 1 Corinthians, in which St. Paul goes on to say, For I think that God hath set forth us apostles, the last, as it were, men appointed to death. We are made a spectacle to the world, and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. Even unto this hour we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no fixed abode, and we labor, working with our own hands. We are reviled and we bless. We are persecuted and we suffer. And inspired we come to this Church of the Holy Apostles to prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord in just a few days' time on the Feast of Christmas. It will serve us well to review the Gospel readings from the Sundays in Advent. When examined as a group, the Gospels for the Masses of Advent may seem to be ordered in a rather peculiar way. They are in fact arranged chronologically backwards. On the first Sunday of Advent, the Church reads from St. Luke Christ's account of the signs that will precede his return in glory at the end of the world. This sets a theological note that will be repeated throughout the season. The first coming of Christ to redeem the world is often contrasted to the second coming, when he shall return to judge it. On the second Sunday, John the Baptist, imprisoned by King Herod, sends his disciples to ask Christ if he is indeed the Redeemer, whose coming the world has long awaited. His answer is that the signs of the first coming are already happening, as foretold in the prophets. The Gospel of the Third Sunday recounts an episode from the early days of John's ministry, before his imprisonment. When men were moved to ask him if he was the Messiah, John confessed that he was but the forerunner of another who stood in their midst. Christ himself does not appear or speak in this gospel. The gospel of the fourth Sunday is the very beginning of John's mission. St. Luke repeats once again and draws us further back in time to the prophets who foretold not only the coming of Christ, but also that of the forerunner. This is the only gospel of the liturgical year in which Christ himself makes no appearance at all. But considering only the Sunday Gospels of Advent, it seems that Christ is drawing away from us as we come closer to the day of his nativity. We look to the Ember Day Gospels then, where the church proclaims on Ember Wednesday the Incarnation, and on Ember Friday the Visitation. The church then anticipates on Ember Saturday the Gospel of the following day, the Gospel for this fourth Sunday of Advent. In the three Ember Day Gospels together, therefore, God becomes incarnate, goes to the last of his prophets, and sends him forth to prepare his way. And so we too look to the collect for today's Mass, where it says, Stir up thy power and come. We beseech thee, O Lord, and with great might run to our aid, that by the help of thy grace, thy merciful forgiveness may accelerate what our sins are impeding. The faithful can therefore Fruitfully use this collect as a reminder to be shriven, to have our sins forgiven in the sacrament of confession before we celebrate the great feast of the nativity, that the remission of our sins might accelerate the graces necessary to quickly return us to the path that makes straight the way of the Lord. I wish you and yours a blessed preparation for Christmas, and I thank you for watching Crux Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. I'll see you at the next Roman Station Church.